Oh come on man I'm opting for a DRS here Well I'm sure you guys are wondering what is this woman up to Well what can I say Since the time DRS came to kick it I just you know couldn't imagine not having DRS in my real life Can you imagine the power of having DRS in your own life the power of going back to events which you're not happy with and turning them around Well that'll be so cool Well till the time DRS does not come to your own real life you just have to be happy with it being in cricket and i'm sure all of you fans are very sure of on field decision each one of you have a certain opinion about it but this is the show where we sort of reflect back to it and sort of clear some doubts or maybe add some so hello and welcome to our brand new show DRS which is doubt for review system Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello and welcome to this brand new show DRS, which is Doubtful Review System, brought to you by Sports Ada, your one-stop destination for all things cricket, football, and kabaddi. So, if you're a sports fan, you must download this link now. Now, everybody has been seen to have some sort of an opinion about the decisions taken by the players, teams, and the umpires on the field. and we thought how much you feature it so why don't we dive straight into it and let's try and clear some doubts or maybe plant some more and for that i have the legend of the game ladies and gentlemen put your hands up in the air and hail this man so that i've got brett lee on the show hi brett lee welcome to brs namaste ready how are you i'm fantastic namaste how have you been I've been good, been busy. Great to be back in India, of course, and uh, lots of cricket on, which is always exciting. It is indeed exciting, and I'm looking forward to some great stories coming from you, especially from the T20 league that has been on. So let's dive straight into what the show is all about. It is about DRS, but it's, a, it's with a little bit of a twist, which is doubtful review system, and hence, exactly, and hence the very first step to DRS is. front foot sleeve so let's begin let's start with the very first one brett there's one question that the entire country is asking why is chennai performing so uncharacteristically well the boys in yellow have had a a tough season so far normally right from the start of the tournament uh, going back to 2008 they've always made the qualifying rounds this year they're struggling at the moment and i think it's for a number of reasons so firstly chennai normally bat the full allotted 20 overs so 120 balls they normally go deep and get a big total they haven't done that this year so the other thing is when you think about players like sam curran who's come in he's a youngster coming into chennai but he's been performing very very well and they don't really know where to bat him or bowl him at the moment so i think there's a few issues there and then also with doni msd i mean the top player that he always leads from the front he's batted in nearly every single position from about 7 down to 4 so he needs to find exactly where his niche is make sure he's sorted and then team bats around him but they definitely have a couple of things to work on Indeed, and Sam Curran looks like he needed a valid ID proof to come to the party, <laughs> but now he's the only one dancing on the dance floor. He looks about twelve. I know, great player. Yeah. He's on the dance floor and he's doing a great job. Indeed, he is. He's got some moves. But what is with the moves of Kedar Jada? Well, he is. He's going through a bit of a form slump now. I want to say, firstly, he's a quality player. That's there's no doubting that. But unfortunately for him with Chennai at the moment he's not scoring runs or doing stuff in the field that we used to see with Kedar Jadhav so I think that he might actually step away from the game for a few games just to find some form in the nets. You got guys like Bravo that can step up and powerful hitters like he's trying to go deep the other night he couldn't really find the boundary just needs to go back and find some form in my opinion. Well hopefully and hopefully Vishal Pooru finds his groove. Well, there is a term for social distancing that everybody seems to be using, and Ashwin has taken that a bit too seriously, Brett. Yeah, well, look, he's obviously warned uh, batsmen through social media that uh, don't be leaving your crease, otherwise I'll man cat you. So there's there's probably two ways to look at this. From the legal sense, he has done nothing wrong, Ashwin. Like he's playing by the rules of the game. The batsmen have have to ensure that they're not. advancing down the wicket before the ball's bowled 
then there's the other aspect that they call the spirit of cricket. And is it a bad thing to do in terms of the, the spirit of cricket? It's very hard when you've got a rule that's in place versus the spirit of cricket, such a gray area. So for me personally, I don't think Ashwin's done anything wrong. He's playing by the rules of the game and he's definitely warned the batsman, do not leave your crease otherwise you'll be in trouble. Indeed. But it looks like being friends with Ashwin has its own perk that you'll get warned before. Well, at least you get warned. And that's the thing, if it happened and he didn't warn anyone, then you'd go, well, that's probably not the right thing to do. It's happened before, he's warned batsman before, then he's done it. And this time he's actually done a warning, so I don't have a problem with it. All right. But here's a question for you. Uh, would you have managed to man catch someone? No, nah, never. Because imagine me trying to run in at 36 kilometers per hour and then stop. I mean, it'd be like turn the Queen Mary. It'd be too hard. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, let's shift gears to the next moment that we have in our hands today. Well, it seems that Punjab and luck are on a break. I mean, Brett, what's going on with that team? Their batsmen are performing. They are playing some good cricket, but there are no wins and no points in that point table. I know, and firstly, such regard to my friends up north. They they are going through a really, really tough time. And, I, you know, I feel for the owners, I feel for Pretty Zenta, I feel for the players. Because, to me personally, when you have a look at the team and what's happened with Punjab, they're actually... There's, there's, there's no issue with the top order. They are scoring runs. The top order are on fire. K.L. Rahul, Mayank Agarwal are two of the top three batsmen that are performing in this tournament. So there's no issue with their top order. To me, it comes down to the way they're bowling, the death bowling. Uh, we saw what happened the other evening where, uh, you know, they've got super over, yeah. Catherine Rabada, Stoinis, you know, took them down. They, those types of things. So they haven't had a lot of luck but hopefully their luck will turn around shortly. And what about that particular game, Brett, where uh, they went up against Rajasthan? Uh, they, they had that game in their hands, but then came Rahul Sivatiya firing and putting up an air show. He was brilliant. He played like a man possessed, didn't he? I mean, the, think about it too, that they were playing up at Sharjah. And when you play at Sharjah, it is tiny. It's like the size of my room. It's like a little postage stamp. There's like 36s every time they play there on average. So there's sometimes more. But he stole the game. The thing with Punjab, though, is that they are scoring runs at the top of the order, but they're not taking wickets at the crucial time. So I think they need to work on their death bowling. And when they come up against like guys like Tawatia, they've got to find a way to try and get them out. Yeah, I think Cottrell is never going to watch Dilto Pagale. I'm not sure if you'll get this reference. But uh, you know, there's a dialogue out there. Uh, Rahul Nam to Suna Hoga. Well, he very well knows who Rahul is. So he's not watching Dilto Pagale. Of course, of course. All right. Well, uh, where do you see Punjab going from here? They've got to go up. Simple. I mean, they can't go any lower. They are on the bottom of the table. They have to go up. So, they're from the north. They've got to go back up north. At the moment, they're right down south. They're south of India. They're on the bottom of the table. They've got to find a way to inject some positivity. And my advice to Punjab would be have fun. I mean, you're playing this wonderful tournament. You're playing in front of millions of people in terms of watching, even though there's no crowd there because of the whole COVID thing. But have fun. You're playing in a great tournament against some amazing players. Enjoy it. Yeah, and it's time to get it comes back to the lineup. I mean, I'm really missing it. How can the universe boss be sitting on the bench? I mean, he's got splinters in his backside, hasn't he? Get him off the bench, get him out there and let him play. From the north to down south, Hyderabad, has some middle order issues going on. Would you like to address them for us, Brett? Yeah, look, they've they've got a great top order in David Warner and, and Johnny Bairstow, but their middle order looks a little bit weak to me, a little bit fragile. And no disrespect to the, the players that are there, but they haven't really got the experience. So the fragile aspect could come from lack of game time, uh, lack of you know preparation in terms of playing in these big tournaments. So. I think they are struggling, uh, Hyderabad, because of that, that middle order. The other thing too with, with Hyderabad is that when you look at the statistics, there's only been two balls that have been bowled over 140 Ks from Hyderabad this tournament. So you look at other teams, 
uh, like Delhi that have bowled, you know, 150 balls over 140 Ks. So I think lack of pace is a big concern for Hyderabad. Yeah, but uh, this crisis though has given a lot of uh, sort of hope to the other players like Yusuf Pathan. Definitely, and look, there's, there's, there's players that are sitting on the sideline. I actually went through yesterday and had a look at these players that are playing this tournament that I could name 15 players that could play in any um, international side that are sitting on the bench because of the quality of players that are out there and only four overseas players can play at one time. But you, you, know, you mentioned Patan there, could definitely play, you know, a former teammate of mine. So uh, inject, try something different if it's not working, inject some you know, youth or experience in and then see what happens. Yeah, and with Bhuvi being out because of the injury, what a big blow is it for oh. this particular team? Well, it's a big blow for him because obviously first his injury. I mean, he's one of my favourite players. I love watching Booby bowl. I mean, he's got beautiful shape, swings the ball both ways. Um, out with that hip slash uh, quad injury. Hopefully he recovers. He won't be in this tournament, but hopefully he's back playing uh, shortly for his uh, country. Well, I hope Hyderabad gets the middle order in order and climbs up the points table. With that, let's move on to the next one. The Sharjah Royals are screaming out loud, take me back to Sharjah. And there is one man who wants to get there and hit sixes the way he did. It is Sanju Samson. It's high time he comes back and form there in that particular field. Sanju Samson is one of my favourite players also in this tournament. He's a quality player, a big hitter, but also a a very naturally gifted player. I mean, he plays inside the V. He's got all the shots, a 360 player. So he'll be looking forward to getting up there and you know, having a, a decent innings. To me though, with the Royals, what are, what are they missing? They're missing the likes of a quality all-rounder in my opinion. I know that Ben Stokes is now back here in India, still in quarantine from what I'm hearing, but uh, hopefully he'll be back at there playing as well. But they've also got to contend with three losses on the go. So they, they, they've you know, missed out, they've had a horrible run, three losses, they've got to try to find a way to turn that around. And I'm sure England was also not sort of uh, waiting for him so much after that bar incident as much as the Rajasthan players have been waiting for it to just finish up the quarantine and come down and play. Yeah, and just get through this, um, you know, this, this bubble time that he's been involved in, you know, he's in quarantine, so get him out of that, get him back with Rajasthan, hopefully they can start winning again. Right. And what about uh, Robin Usapa's style and form? Has that impressed you? He's been struggling. He's actually been struggling now, um, Ritima, for about two seasons, I think. He's actually, I'm not willing to say he's past his best, but he, you know, his he's scores have to, have to be looked at because that's a, that's a big spot for Rajasthan that he's taking up. So if he's not scoring runs, like if, you know, David Warner's not scoring runs for uh, Hyderabad or you know, another player like a Stone not scoring runs for Delhi, they've got to be looked at. Same as Robert Ultapa, not scoring runs. His position is definitely up for grabs. Indeed. But the, the Rajasthan has to find a way to be performing in other venues other than Sharjah. Correct. They have and to I, break the Sharjah connection. Exactly. And, and I agree with that 100%. So it's all well and good to dominate in one ground up at Sharjah, which is a small venue. And, and you have one player that comes off and hits a lot of sixes and like Tawatia that, you know, got him back in the game. But what happens when they get to Abu Dhabi? What happens when they get to Dubai? They've got to be able to form on those wickets that are more bouncier and less conducive to big sixes. Right. Well, with that, let's conclude this segment. And, uh, well, I hope, Brett, you found that a fair and fun delivery of the moments that have made headlines in the T20 League so far. Loved it. Brilliant. All right, let's move on. Well, with that, it's time to move on to step two of DRS. And because our DRS is a little different, it's called the Doubtful Review System. Our second step, hot spot is quite literal. Are you ready for this, Brett? Bring it on. Let's go. Let's go for it. So I have some options for you. And you can, uh, you know, pick and choose your hot spot that you, you want to go for. All okay. right, so here are your options. The options are, Ricky Ponting has read Ashwin's tweet after the Finch warning and now they've both bumped into each other. <laughs> option number two. Option number two is, K.L. Rahul has just played the Super Over against Delhi, where he didn't send out Mayank Agarwal and he enters the dressing room and Mayank is right in front of him. 
who wants to be awkward yes okay, okay. i've got the option number 3 which is the empire who called a short run in the delhi versus punjab game meet priti in the hotel lobby okay and the next option is kedar jadhav comes back in the dressing room and sees sam karan and bravo sitting in the dressing room wondering why didn't they go out to bat so red now that i've laid down all your options pick your hot spot and tell me how would that situation flow then option number 3 It's the short run, and the umpire bumps into Priti Zeta. So imagine this: they're in the hotel foyer, and the umpire walks in. Priti Zeta walks towards the lift, and they meet right near the lift. And it's the umpire that called the short run, and he looks at her, and she looks at him, and they're a bit like awkward. And he says, "Hello, Priti G. Namaste, Shashri Kaur." She's like. And he's like, "What?" And she says, "You know that was a short run. You made a mistake." And he apologizes profusely. He says, "I'm so sorry. I got it wrong. Yes, it was a mistake. It cost the match. I feel horrible, but I think you're a wonderful actress. And I know you present it very well. And she's a very, very lovely person. She's a strong woman. So you know, you wouldn't want to mess with her either." Yeah. And he's feeling really embarrassed. And then. He then gets the courage up after they've had that little confrontation. The courage up is, "Can I please have your autograph, Miss Presenter?" And she says, "Okay, give me a piece of pen, a piece of paper and a pen." So she signs the autograph, and he says, "Um, you've only signed Pretty. You haven't signed Presenter." He says, "Yeah." That's, and she says, "That's because it's a short run." Short run. <laughs> short name for the short run. Well, I must say you played that really well, Brett. Very, very well played. It well, I think it's, I, I, I wish I had an audience here, but because of social distancing, there is no audience. I would have asked them to give you a big round of applause for this one. Thank you. Well, that is a that is a hypothetical situation, but I'm sure such funny, tense situations have happened a lot throughout your career. Well, you know, you would have also wished that I wish I had uh, the option of a DRS. Has it ever happened? Yeah, look, it has happened. It, it's it's happened to me. This is going back probably 15 years ago, and I was playing in a grade competition. So back in Sydney, and I'm playing first grade. This batsman, he'd just gone past the hundred, so he's been batting the whole morning. We couldn't get him out. There was a couple of times where I thought there may have been a nick behind the umpire. Said not out. So I'm I'm concerned about the umpire's hearing. To be honest, I think the umpire's not hearing properly. He's probably not seeing properly. So I'm worried about the umpire. Batsman gets to over a hundred, and it's a really, really hot day in Sydney. It's a summer's day. It's like 40 degrees. It's like like being here in Mumbai in summer. 40 degrees, really hot and humid. I'm running in the bowl, and I finally get the chance where I think, all right, second new ball's due. I'm a really good chance of getting this guy out. We've got to get him out. My teammates are saying, come on, Binger, you've got to get this batsman out. So as I run into the bowl, the ball angles back in. Looks as though he hits his pad, flies off his pad, goes straight to the keeper. I've jumped up. I said, "Yeah, how's that? How's that?" He said, "What are you appealing for?" I said, "I'm appealing for a wicket." What? What? What do you mean? What am I appealing for? I'm appealing for a wicket. How's that means everything? He goes, "Well, pick one." I said, "Well, how's that for LBW?" And he says, "Not out." I went, "Okay, but." Why? And he goes because he hit it. And I said, well, if he hit it, it went onto his pad and went to the keeper. He's out, caught behind. He said, no, he's not out. I said, why? He's clearly nicked the ball onto his pad. So if his LBW is like, that's fine. Let's move on to number two. He's nicked it onto his pad, hasn't touched the ground, gone to the keeper, out, caught behind. The umpire said, uh, not out. And I was like, oh no. If only I had. To go upstairs and say, DRS, they would have proven. <laughs> DRS would have proven that it hit the bat. So LBW is not in play, but a caught behind would have been out. And this guy batted the whole day, and it was so hot. And I just wish that there was DRS. I, I wish there was DRS. I mean, this is why you know how technology has changed the game and also all our lives for sure. Yeah. A lovely story, and since we've also gotten into storytelling and emotions, like I got caught up there. But it's time to move on to our next segment, 
which is three reds or empire calls. So let's shift gears and go to our final segment. All right, so this is our last and final segment on DRX, which is three reds or empire calls. And before we dive into the segment, let me ask you a question, sir. What is that emotion that comes to your mind when I say the word cricket? Sledging. Sledging. Mm, no, no, no. I mean fans. Fans will make the game of cricket happen. Indeed. I mean, we've been sort of missing out on them in the field on the ongoing T20 league. But well, to you know, sort of, uh, we thought we'd get them right here on the show because here we can follow, you know, social. Distance. Right. So we've got two hardcore fans of two of the teams that have been struggling so far. It's Chennai and Punjab, and we've got Krunal and Vicky joining us on the show. So let's get them on. Hello, gentlemen. Krunal. Hello, gentlemen. Wanna come, Sachikar, mm-hmm. Ricky B. Thank hello, so hello, Binga. Sasrika. Thank you, thank you, Brett. Well, Krunal and Ricky, I was just about to say that you guys have taken a lot of time to arrive, just like your team. Well, uh, thank you so much for the welcome. And uh, Brett, I just like to say one thing. Uh, we have one thing in common. Both of us believe in yell love. But there's one objection that I have to something that Ritima said. Uh, what? What did I look, say? You can't, you can't possibly say that we're struggling in cricketing aspects. Uh, look, when you talk about Chennai. We are the only team to have made the playoffs every single season. We have three titles and we've made the finals eight times. I can understand that's a valid argument for a Punjab fan, but not for Chennai. Excuse me? Punjab fan? What? What? Why are you taking me in the beach? What did I do? Exactly. What have you done? It's been 12 years. You haven't done anything. Bro, please, please, please. If you are forgetting, let me remind you. The last time we played in UAE, we won five out of five games. And Bre- for your kind information, what is this yellow, yellow? Brekki also played for Punjab and not Chennai. Look, one, you're proud of five... Un- Look, you're, one thing, you're proud of five unbeaten games in the UAE. I'm proud of ten seasons that we've never failed to make the playoffs and we're not the same. Boys, boys, same. boys, boys. Aram se, aram se, okay? My relax. <laughs> relax, relax, relax. Let's, you know, let's sledge. I mean, let's let's keep moving in a civil way. Let's not get overheated here. It's very hot in India. No point getting overheated, okay? Relax. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's time that we all take a deep breath. And I like the fact that it's already gotten so heated. But you know what, guys? I think I'm going to give you guys a fair chance to convince Brett. And uh, if you manage to do that, I take my statement back. Is that okay? Cool. Sounds all good. Right. So, Let's call for the DRS. Yep, DRS. Go for it. Who's going first though? Well, Chennai. Chennai can go first. Why, well, why, why Chennai, Ridhima? I object here. What's with the preference given to Chennai always? I please make a toss karna hai, I'll toss hi hoga. I cannot go first. Yeah, I'll do a toss. Ready? Here we go. Heads. Tails. Chennai win. <laughs> like, toss ke pehle give up mar deta hai. Teri team ko bhi har season ke pehle give up marna hi chahiye. But anyway, no, no, go ahead. start with Chennai again. Chennai, Chennai can start. All right, Chennai start. So Chennai, I ask you a question, and uh, if your answer is convincing enough for Brett, uh, we'll see how we want to manage manage this taking these statements back and all. So here's the question that I have for you. It's very clearly evident that your team is clearly missing Raina and Harpreet. It's very evident. Look, uh, Harpreet probably not so much. Our uh, spin attack is sorted. But I think I speak for every Chennai fan when I say that we do miss Raina. We do miss Chinnatala on the field. Right, but I think we have it sorted in terms of the uh, team and the batting combination. Faf Duplessis has stepped up; he's in the form of his life. Raidu was injured in between, but he beat Mumbai with a match-winning knock, and I think Raidu is more than capable to do the role, to play the role that Raina played. So I don't think there is a question uh, of the batting. Uh, I don't think there's any question about the batting. I think Raidu and Faf Duplessis and Watson can step up. The Colonel, to me, it all, you know, it all comes down to the batting order, making sure that the batting order is in the right order. It was not in the right order, so to me, that was a massive tactical blunder. I think, I think if you're talking about the previous game, that's a blip, right? That's that's just one game. That's a blip. Uh, sorry, 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 Krunal, blip. If I have to, if if I have to summarize your entire situation and entire se- season that's going, it's nothing but blip. Your entire season is a blip, and your entire existence in the Indian T20 League is a blip. Oh my God, guys! I think Boys, you guys should definitely calm, calm down, down now. 
please take a deep breath and stay away. I'm glad there is social distancing happening. <laughs> But uh, Ricky, I wanted to ask you this question that you can definitely not defend that decision of not sending Mayank in the super over to bat. See, Ridhima, poor fellow. He was tired. He scored 89 runs. Binga scoring runs. UAE heat is not easy. Obviously, Chennai fan wouldn't know that scoring runs requires lot. You know, it takes a heavy toll on your body. He wouldn't know that. So I don't think. And plus, given the form that Rahul is in, he and give it a shot. I oh, know, but look, he almost scored a hundred, mate. But like, he would have only had to face six deliveries, and out of those six, maybe he would have faced three or four. So hydration, bananas, and if he didn't want to come back out, maybe give him a pillow. Have a sleep, but <laughs> but still I feel Rahul was also in form and it didn't work. But I think that wasn't a bad decision. He took the he took responsibility he took responsibility to lose the game. They scored two on the super over two. He took responsibility to lose the game. Bro, responsibility ka to tu baat mat kar. You tu baat mat kar. Coming in at number seven in a big case in a crunch situation is a bad captaincy. Okay, ye thala. Kaun hai thala? Look, forget captaincy. You forget cap. Forget your team and captaincy. You don't have any common sense in your team. How can you not send Mayank Agarwal in the Super Over? He scored 89. He's been the best batsman. Granted, he pulled a Mushfiqur Rahim at the end, but no, he was the best batsman that game. Try. He should have been sent in the Super Over. And let me tell you one thing: Mayank Agarwal trying to go for the glory six at the end. Not everyone is capable of that. Bhai, tu tu chup kar. You tu to bilkul mat. Okay, I agree. Mayank Agarwal scored a brilliant 89, but bro, he was tired. You guys, you understand that? The way he ran, he was completely tired. Unlike your captain, who can't even five overs, and he like. Hey, 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 hey,